Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. Oh, another beautiful day in Zamunda. It's Valentine's Day. I don't particularly give a shit about Valentine's Day. Never really have. My wife and I don't celebrate like most holiday type things like that. Why bother? We know we dig each other and we have for a long time and always will. That being said, I am going out to get Valentine's Day treats because you gotta get something out of this holiday, right? And that's usually that people make some really delicious, fun things for, for the holiday. So that's what I'm gonna do. As usual, I am feeling antsy. It's like 2.20 and I've been sitting inside all day. I got up and got us Sunday bagels, which I overeat. And then I totally just wanted to freaking crash on the couch. I laid down for like 30 seconds and I was like, no, just get up, dude. You can't freaking piss the day away sleeping on the couch. So I got up and I went upstairs and I started doing stuff in the studio. A couple of things that I had in my melon at, you know, when I was going to sleep last night that I wanted to put, you know, like the, the little rubber placeholders underneath the legs on that new table so that maybe it would be less wobbly if it were on something with purchase rather than mushing into the carpet. So I put those on there, but then I also took the ankle weights, the 10 pound ankle weights that I have that we use when we put on the Christmas tree stand. And I mean, it only gets used during Christmas. So I took those and they're, they're like uh, soft weights and I wrapped them around and, and Velcroed them down onto the, the leg crossbars to give it a little bit more weight to pull it down. So it is actually much less wobbly now, and that's cool. In the meantime, I have been going through all of my drawers of stuff and looking for things that might make the setup a little bit better. One of the things that bothers me about using the ZV-1 for the overhead camera setup, and that's that when the screen comes out, it doesn't come all the way out. And the way that I have it sitting there, it's crooked. So I'm trying to, like I'm looking at the screen and I'm trying to maneuver, let's say my iPad, because that's what I've been using to center everything. So I try to maneuver it to make it look straight. But because I'm looking at a crooked screen, I'm moving it to match the screen, which is then making it crooked on the actual table, which makes it crooked. You know. So it's all messed up and it's screwing with my head. So I decided that, you know, I've, I've got a couple of different uh, monitors and I have a small little uh, five inch field world monitor that I used to use on my a7 III prior before getting, you know, all the stuff that I have now. I thought, yeah, pff, man, it's just sitting in a drawer like everything else. So I might as well use it. And I don't know how I'm gonna mount it, but I'm sure that there's gonna be a way that I can mount it to that arm that'll make it perfect so that I could just look up at the monitor right in front of me, bigger than on the little ZV-1 screen, and I can see stuff and, and it'll be good. The best laid plans, as you've seen. How many times have I changed everything that I said I was gonna do? Hell, I even went out and bought stuff, built it, changed it the next day, and then decided it was shit and took it out. So, I mean, that's the, the world of budget do-it-yourselfers. So I, I have been pulling stuff out and Dr. Frankensteining things together and trying them and, and seeing like, oh yeah, I don't need to buy that. I've got a whole drawer full, you know, things like that. Hopefully that'll all work out, but I can't do jack shit until all that stuff comes in. Now today I played with lenses. The 16 millimeter that's sitting on the center rig in front of me on that 6600 is great. I have it framed just the way I want it. It's all good to go and I have no problems with it. When I go into the B cam, the side camera, which regardless of which side I put it on, I've had to use the 30 millimeter Sigma. 56 is just too, no way. Even that 30 millimeter, it's too, it's too close up on me. And I, I haven't really cared for that, which is why I haven't been doing as much, especially when I moved it to the right side. I haven't been doing as much of that, that B cam stuff because it bothers me that it's like right up on my melon. Part of the problem is, is that what I'm doing is that I'm putting it, both lenses, the 16 and the 30, at, at the 1.4 so that it's in there, there's no hunting, and my melon's in focus. So today I decided, well, I know I don't wanna use the 10 to 18, because that's too wide and that picks up too much of everything that I don't want in the frame. And I thought, you know what? I've got that 18 to 105. Yeah, it's only an F4. Well, let me see what I can do with it. So I put the 18 to 105 on and I actually zoomed it into 24 millimeters, which would be perfect if I had like a 24 millimeter prime instead of a 30. Yes, that six millimeters makes a big difference. So I put it to 24 and it was, obviously a little bit darker because 
it only goes to F4. It doesn't go to 1.4. But then I thought to myself, stop getting hung up on that whole, the, the, you know, ISO breeds noise mentality. And instead of having it on what I had it set on, I actually put it to a manual and I turned it up from, I think it was at like 540 to 800. And that actually then almost pretty much matched the 1.4 as far as the the brightness on the screen and everything so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to use the 18 to 105 f4 i'll have it at f4 but i will have it on 24 millimeters and iso 800 and it actually looked pretty decent and it wasn't like right there smashed up on my melon which i did not like if i hadn't mentioned that before so today is just all about me i don't know just sort of getting all the little itty bitty details out of the way for the way that I want to shoot when I'm in my studio, which is the bulk of what I'm doing, especially when it's shitty out like this. All right, so at this point now, I just hooked up the second A6600 on the B cam angle side, and I put on the 18105, like I was talking about, and I put it to 24 millimeters, and you can see what it gets in there. It's, it's kind of like, all right, so here's where I'd be sitting, and I would be looking straight ahead at the uh, Cinerig, and this gets a little bit further back. It's a little bit more in the picture than I think it did when I had it to the 30 millimeter. Now, here I'm gonna... There, that's 30 on this 18 to 105. So this would be what it would look like if I had the Sigma 30 millimeter on there. It's just my melon and I didn't like that. So I think that having it at 24 millimeters is perfect. I kind of dig this focal length, the 24 millimeters on this 18 to 105, and that's pretty much it. So I just wanted to show you again what I'm doing, how I'm going through all these drawers and picking all this stuff out, and sort of you know Dr. Frankenstein things together to try to get what in my mind in my melon is what I want. I think I'll get there eventually. Of course, then I'll change it, but you know that's coming. So at this point right now, I'm just waiting for stuff to show up on Tuesday and probably Wednesday and that'll be the final thing. But that's all I've got for today. Right now, I need to get cracking on my office work. As always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.